Welcome to this review of Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. I do actually have the book, but I'm just going to put a photo of it here instead for this review because my arm's a bit sore today. I know I'm late to the party with this book because I think it was actually published in 2014, but better late than never, this book is amazing. Let's dive into the review. I was not expecting to like this book anywhere near as much as I did. I actually came across this book on one of those like street side uh, libraries. I don't know if you've got them in your neighborhood, but around Sydney, there are all these little boxes on the front of houses or on the streets around and people basically just put books that they don't want into these boxes and they're like a community library and so you can take books for free pretty much and I was walking down the street the other day and I came across the library and of course I stop at every library and I found this book there and of course I've heard of Nike but didn't really know who Phil Knight was I didn't know that he was the founder of Nike but I was planning on going to a cafe that morning and I had forgotten the book that I was reading at home and long story short I was like all right it looks interesting enough I'll just pick it up and read it at the cafe and so I did. <laughs> I was originally expecting this book to be another entrepreneurial, motivational, let's make lots of money, just dream it and it'll happen kind of book where the founder of Nike was a really headstrong, determined, almost like a bulldozer character and that he would just talk about power and money and business and that would be most of what the book was about. I was so, so so wrong. This book is about Phil and how he founded Nike with his coach back in the 1960s, but it's so much more than just a book about business. It's a lot about Phil's life and it's almost like a memoir to his life and the business that he created throughout it. One of the things that I found most striking about this book was that Phil repeatedly refers back to how insecure and nervous and sometimes embarrassed he felt at times about his career, particularly during moments that I guess were really high stakes. He talks a lot about a few moments when Nike was definitely teetering on the edge of success or failure and how in those moments it all kind of rode on his relationship with someone or the way that he dealt with the situation and he quite often refers to just feeling nervous and in a few times felt like he kind of screwed up whatever situation it was and that maybe Nike wasn't going to succeed after all and I found that really, really interesting I don't know I just wasn't expecting to see such a, a vulnerable and real side of Phil sometimes you get the impression well at least I personally do that people like Bill Gates or Elon Musk or all those really successful businessmen are just what's the word superhuman in a way <laughs> I feel like I can't really imagine those kind of people ever feeling embarrassed or nervous or screwing a situation up, but at least when it comes to Phil Knight, he not only talked about a number of times when he felt like he was embarrassed or didn't have the confidence to address the situation properly, but he, he really went into a lot of description about those moments and how he felt, and it was just so easy to relate, I think. I think that's what I'm trying to say. It was really easy to relate to him, and it made him very likeable. Phil talks about the development of Nike right from when he first had the initial business idea to import shoes from Japan to the USA back in the 1960s all the way up to today's sales and Nike as it is today. The personal aspects of Phil aside, the business story of Nike is just oh, <laughs> so amazing. I think it's safe to say that Phil Knight has paid his dues. He went through so much stress and so many issues and drama and problems and for the first 15 or so years of Nike, it just seemed like the business was literally teetering, teetering on the edge of success or failure. And at any moment, the bank could ask for its loan back or the shipment of shoes from Japan wouldn't come through in time and the entire business and what Phil had built would be over. And the really interesting thing was that Nike was basically doubling its sales every year, year on year. And so, so much money was coming into the business, but because there was such massive growth, there was also a lot of expenses and so Phil really had a cash flow problem for many many years and oh the drama and the story and the stress I couldn't put it down I could not put this book down another perception that I have for some reason is that really successful businessmen and women are just kind of like overnight successes and that they wake up one day have this amazing idea put it into action and then poof they're millionaires that wasn't Phil's journey and I think Phil's story is actually a much more realistic look at how businesses are built I think it's really easy to just see successful people as successful and that's it but I think it's really easy to forget about all the hard work that people put into successes and, and I think this book is a really good reminder that things take time and they take effort and they take a lot of strong will and Phil had so much of that. <laughs>
One thing I will say is that this book took a little bit to get into. I'm not much of a sporting fan to begin with and like I mentioned I ended up picking it up because I wanted something to read and didn't have any other options. I felt like the beginning did take a bit of time to kind of get going but once Phil starts talking about Nike and how it started to really take off, then it became very, very, very interesting very quickly. Nike's first year of sales was about $8,000 and now Phil Knight is worth 30 billion or so, last I checked on Google, which I think is just absolutely incredible. And I honestly think Phil deserves every cent. His story and his, his, his way of approaching his business and his life, you can just sense the passion inside him. And I don't think that he would have got to where he is if anything else apart from passion was driving him. He was really, really interested in running and sports shoes and increasing your athletic ability naturally even before Nike came to fruition. And his zest for life and his drive to build something bigger than himself was very evident in this book, but also his humbleness and his belief that he was just another person who just happened to be doing something wonderful and wanted to help other athletes similar to him. His story is just so refreshing, so beautiful. By the end, I literally cried. I really did. I cried. <laughs> it's such an emotional, drama, like drama-filled roller coaster. It's such. Oh, I lost the words. You have to read this book. If you'd like to pick up this book, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.